Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thanks for joining us today. This is Jim McKeith, Chief Developer Advocate for Embarcadero Technologies. And thanks for joining us for this special webinar about how to turn your existing Delphi and C++ builder applications, desktop applications, into cloud applications in less than a month. Joining me today is Vlad and Dimitri from Rollapp. Thanks for joining us today, guys, and I'll let you take it from here. So my name is uh, Vlad Pavlov. I'm the CEO and founder of Rollapp. I started this company uh, seven years ago. And here is also Dima Malenko. I'm CTO with Rollapp and I've also been there from the very beginning. So what is Rollapp? Uh, when we started seven years ago, we had a dream to make it possible to work with any existing unmodified application on any device. Think about being able to work with Windows applications on your iPads or with your Mac applications from your uh, Windows devices or maybe playing with your uh, iPhone game from your Android smartphone. Well, that is pretty ambitious goal, but we were lucky enough to have the best uh, people uh, on the planet who joined our team, for example, Jan Straustrup, the author of C++ programming language, joined our advisory board, uh, or uh, Bobby Anucci, who is former uh, CTO and vice, senior vice president from Nokia, also joined our advisory board. So, so we were not afraid of um, those challenges, and um, two years after starting the company, we created the first version of our platform and started offering our product to consumers. So the first version, of course, had uh, limited functionality. Uh, we only offered Windows and Linux desk desktop applications, but on any device, you name it, iPad, Android, Chromebook, uh, whatever. So in 2012, we entered a um, consumer market. We partnered with a few major distribution, with a few major uh, companies as a distribution partners, uh, such guys as uh, Samsung, Mozilla, etc. Uh, in a few years, we reached traffic of about five million unique uh, users uh, a month. Uh, but we were working uh, with consumers, and on the same time, we were receiving requests from um, enterprise customers who also wanted to use our platform to move their applications to the cloud. And we never actually knew what to respond to them. And we didn't feel well about that. And last year, we decided, OK, consumers is a good market segment, but we also want to go to the enterprise customers. And basically, today, we are going to talk about how we are working with enterprise customers and what we are offering them. Well, the question here is, who are the enterprise customers? And when we say enterprise, we have two types of companies in mind. First is what we call ISVs, independent software vendors, companies that develop software and sell that software. The second type is just large enterprise customers. These are big organizations who have a lot of employees and they buy software to, because they, they need their employees to, to work with that software. So why would enterprise customers need a product like ours? Well, I used to work for Microsoft 10 years ago. 10 years ago at Microsoft, we were not afraid of any other operating system. Maybe Linux was doing something in the server side, but when, it, when we were talking about client devices, endpoint devices, Windows was the only operating system out there. Now the situation is different. It has changed. There are all types of animals out there. There are uh, tablet computers, and last year almost half of enterprise uh, customers in the US actually uh, offered their employees uh, in some way to work with uh, tablet computers. There are, of course, Macs, and Apple is very aggressive on the enterprise market and there are Chromebooks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with what is Chromebook. Google, in, a few years ago, introduced their new operating system called Chrome OS, 
And basically, this is an operating system which only consists of a web browser, of Chrome. There is nothing else. There is no way to install applications there in a traditional sense. Uh, you can only work with web-based applications. And new platforms come to market basically every two years. Some of them are successful, some of them are not, but new, new platforms are, are, are coming regularly. And in this situation, it's pretty hard to be able to offer your customers your application uh, and make sure that it is available on all those platforms because it's pretty hard to maintain different native versions of, of your application for all those partners. The only answer is to be able to offer the cloud version of your application, uh, the version which is available through browser uh, from the internet. And in this case, you don't really care what, uh, what operating system your uh, customers have, what is uh, their form factor of, of their devices, etc., etc. And for some of those devices, uh, like Chromebook, uh, actually cloud-based solution is the only uh, solution for them. They can only work with web-based applications. By the way, I don't know about you, but I was totally surprised about a year ago when I learned that uh, uh, Google and their partners were selling more Chromebooks in the United States than uh, Apple was selling uh, MacBooks. So basically, Chromebooks are, uh, uh, were out selling Macs uh, uh, in the United States a year ago, and this trend continues. Uh, so, as, as I said, basically, the, the, there is only one answer to this challenge, and this answer is to move your application to the cloud. Dima? Right, and another thing, and another important trend, which is very important for us as a developers, is that now with all those new devices coming in, people hold on to their old devices, old PCs, old laptops for longer. The replacement cycle for, for the devices, especially those used in enterprise, grows longer and longer and longer. And for us that means that when we are working on the next version of our apps and want to make use of new upgraded processors, and more uh, RAM or faster GPUs, we cannot do that because we have to take into account the fact that many of our potential customers are still running five, sometimes six or even seven years old uh, PCs and those computers are not capable of running uh, modern versions of the software we developed. And for that, cloud is also a great answer because in cloud you can allocate as much resources as needed by the application and users even with small, uh, with older, slower devices or with newer underpowered devices can still perform complex calculations and do resource intensive tasks in the cloud and cloud is a really great way for applications to go into the future. Vlad? If you attended some conference or workshop seven years ago or five years ago or three years ago, almost every second presenter would say that, hey, cloud is our future, cloud is our tomorrow. Well, this year the situation is different, it has changed. The cloud is not the future anymore. It's not the tomorrow, it's today. It's our present. And if you take a look at basically any marketing report which was published recently, you, 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 you will read it basically everywhere. We are not talking about cloud uh, as about uh, our future anymore. We are talking about cloud as something that is, is already here. It's already here and the customers expect it anyway because uh, this is uh, what we were talking about for, for many years and everyone was waiting for it and finally, finally it's here. It's becoming our reality. Uh, it's another reason to move your application to the cloud simply because, not, not, not only because it solves all, all, uh, many of our problems, but because customers are expecting it. Uh, but sometimes uh, it's simply not possible to move your application to the cloud because it, it would require a lot of resources a lot of time, a lot of money to create new version of your application to, to run it in the cloud. Well, here our solution comes to help. Uh, what, what Relap is doing is 
we are helping to move existing applications to the cloud. We take your application, we don't need your source code, we just need the binaries, the executable, we do some magic, and after we, we have done our magic, your application be becomes available somewhere in the cloud. And your users can use any device to launch their web browser, go to the cloud, and their browser magically turns into uh, an application. So what you see on the screen is a screenshot from, from my Mac. And on this screenshot, you, you can see how we can work in this example with a spreadsheet application. The, the spreadsheet application is not installed on this computer. It's somewhere in the cloud. A, a user used the browser to access that application. But the browser magically turned in, in, into this application. From the user, it looks and behaves and feels as if the application is installed locally. Well, in reality, it runs somewhere on a server, remotely on the cloud, but uh, we broadcast the user interface through a browser, and brow we, we remove everything from the browser, the status bar, menu bar, all the icons. So for, for the user, the application, well, actually the browser, looks and behaves as if it was uh, an actual application. And uh, if the application wants to open one more window, browser is going to, walk to open one more window, uh, but again, for the user, it's going to look as if the application did it locally. And sometimes our users don't even recognize that they're working with remote applications. Sometimes they think that the applications are installed locally. And uh, we can even kind of install the application. And when I say kind of, I mean we can simply add a browser shortcut to a desktop. It's just an icon. But for users, there is no difference between an icon for an actual installed application or a browser shortcut, an icon that leads somewhere to the cloud. A, a user can still click that icon and the application would appear on the screen. Dima? Right, and making sure that the application runs as smoothly and as natively, as undistinctively from a local installed applications as possible was always our main goal. And even when it comes to mobile devices like smartphones and tablets, uh, those devices ha now have browsers are which are as capable as those browsers that are on a desk on desktop platforms, and they naturally can support. Uh, applications running on Rollab and we do everything in in our power to make sure those applications feel natively on, on the devices users have at their hands. For example, this is OpenOffice Calc and uh, developers of op OpenOffice Calc never imagined that this application can run on a tablet with touchscreen device and they never um, make it uh, possible to use the for example, pinch to zoom gesture to, to work with spreadsheet, but this application running on Roll App does get this capability because it it is provided by our platform, by our client layer, which works in the browser on the user's device. And there are many, many things like that. Of course, when it comes to mobile devices, important factor here is the screen size which is typically smaller than the screen size of desktop or laptop computers and the application has to do its job by adapting to a smaller screen size but for surprisingly large number of application applications that can work really really well and applications do get those capabilities simply by running on, on our platform. And the best thing of all is that in order to run in the cloud, no changes to the applications are necessary. In fact, all of those apps which are currently available on rollapp.com, we move to the cloud using the binary distribute, uh, distributions provided by their developers, which we took from their, um, their sites. And even though many of those apps are open source applications, we never had to touch the source of those apps. We used binary packages. And uh, of course, this, these things are available to, to, all, to all applications. And we and currently we, have uh, more than 200 applications publicly available on our website as a part of our consumer package. You can go and try. I think it's 230, right, Dima? Yeah, that's, uh, I think it's even more we, we add uh, new applications very, very often. 
So yeah, yeah, but by all means you should go to rollup.com and, and try some of the apps for yourself. And, and, and then when you try them, you might wonder how this all works. And the next slide kind of shows the uh, high level overview of how it works. We have a cloud system which is based on Linux. And this um, cloud system runs applications in isolated containers which virtualize the operating system and, and other components of the environment for the application and pretend and, and pretend for the application to be running on a real uh, hardware on a real operating system. And uh, the client component which runs on a browser and a client device interacts with this isolated application container and we use the information uh, from the intercepted communication of the application with the operating system to recreate UI and behavior of the application on the client side. And uh, Linux applications run on this system natively and Windows applications uh, run on top of Wine which is also working in that isolated container. And we, I, I spoke briefly about the new, new capabilities which the application gets on the client side, but in fact applications also get new capabilities on the server side. For example, they get integration with Dropbox, Google Drive and other cloud storage services. For the application running on the server, those cloud storage appear as a regular folder with files and users can easily browse them and open files from their cloud storage and save files back to cloud storage. Even for the applications which were developed before Dropbox or Google Drive or any such thing existed. And the next thing is that our cloud is geographically distributed. We cover many, many locations and of course you can see that there are uh, in, in some parts of the world there are, there are more locations where we have presence. This is because majority of our customers come from those areas. But for the servers like ours, it is very important that the application server actually running the application for the user is as close to him as possible because every mile of distance adds latency and we want the applications to be responsive and behave close to how they would behave if they were installed locally and that's why we have this geographically distributed network uh, of, of our uh, services. And also one of the things here is that our our system in, is developed in such a way making it very easy for us to cover new regions and new locations when needs uh, when need uh, for that comes. Lon? Okay, let's see how it actually works. Um, so you should see my desktop and here you see what applications I have here. Some of those applications are real applications installed to the computer. Some of those applications are basically browser shortcuts like this one. So let me click it and the window opens and uh, it is going to take a few seconds to actually launch the application and once it's, it is launched you can see it, it looks like if this is a locally installed spreadsheet application. Let me say it once again. What you see is a browser window. You can resize it, you can uh, uh, do whatever you want, you can go through menu, etc. But this is a browser window uh, and the application actually is running remotely on our cloud infrastructure and we broadcast user interface through a browser. Let me enter some uh, numbers here, just some random uh, uh, digits and uh, let's say I want to use uh, these, uh, uh, these numbers to create a chart so I go and click the chart wizard and another, another window pops up. Again, this is a browser, but it looks and behaves as if this is a, an application window. I can play with it, I can change the type of, uh, uh, the type of chart which I'm using uh, and um, uh, it, it simply works. As I said, sometimes our users don't even recognize that they are working with uh, remote applications. 
of course, uh, LibreOffice was created not uh, uh, not with Delphi. So let's see how um, how our, our technology can work with Delphi applications. And uh, later we will make available our presentation, so you will be able to click those links and try for yourself. But now let me go to Turbo Cash. Uh, which is um, an account and software cl created with uh, uh, with Delphi. Now I'm going to launch it from our website. You can see I went to our website and clicked the launch online button. And again, it takes some time to uh, to launch the application. Uh, now you're you're going to uh, uh, to see the splash screen. So this is actually the splash screen provided by the application. Uh, it, as you see, it takes some time for application to launch, but this is not because our system introduces some extra delays, but it's simply because the application itself requires some time to launch. If you had it installed locally, it would still need some time. Uh, so it asks me now what uh, what type of accounting system I would like to use. I'm uh, located in Palo Alto, so I'll pick California. Let's pick open, click open, and uh, it loads a, a database with some uh, accounting information. And basically, here we go. This is the Turbo Cash. I'm not an expert in accounting software, so <laughs> I don't really know how to work with that. Actually, that was the reason why uh, I started the demonstration with spreadsheet application because everyone understands how spreadsheet applications work. But when I play with it, it basically behaves the way that you would expect from uh, uh, from some kind of accounting uh, accounting information. Let's click invoice, and uh, it's going to open one more window. Uh, looks like it, it is related to invoices somehow. OK, let's click New Invoice. And it wants me to enter some information. OK, Cash Customer San Francisco. Let me uh, choose this one. And what happens next? OK, it asks me to enter some information about this new Cash Customer in San Francisco. So you see, it works as if this application was installed locally. But uh, again, um, in reality, it runs somewhere uh, on our server infrastructure. And the beauty of that, we didn't even need to look at source code of that application. We simply took the installation package, we did some magic, and now everyone can, can work with this Delphi, uh, Delphi application. Uh, Dima? Right. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but you, you, but you should, <laughs> that the application here running on Rollab doesn't uh, have this like remote desktop type of viewport. All all the windows that are created by application are separate windows, and you can cycle through them with Alt Tab or CMD Tab if you're on Mac. And with with this type of potential, with this type of capability of running your application on any device in a matter of seconds, we believe that for desktop application that presents a great opportunity of turning like regular boxed software into software as a service type of a solution. Right now I'm sure you're familiar that <clears throat> applications uh, which derive revenue from selling upgrades or attracting new customers are in a kind of tough spot because their revenue or their income is actually uh, this doesn't match the spending. You you have to invest upfront and then maybe make up the cost of the development when you sell an upgrade or get get new users. When you move your application to the cloud, you can turn it into software as a service and have users subscribe for continual use of that application. And that means that you get get a steady stream of revenue from those subscription, which you can use then to fund further development and continue making your <coughs> application and you know continuing your lead in the niche you're working with another thing is that this is especially applicable to those applications which command higher license prices and higher license fees and higher update prices upgrade prices I should say people 
or new potential users are often reluctant to jump on those um, those apps because they are kind of afraid that they are not sure whether they should invest that much money in the first place and they they can be afraid of the need to pay additional additional prices when new upgrades come come later and for those price sensitive customers or uh, cost sensitive markets you can offer a pay as you go pricing model where they would pay for using your software by an hour or by a week or by a day or by a month and that can also um, make the uh, onboarding hurdles for those type of users lower and attract them to your software and the next thing which you already saw is that with your application in the cloud available on any device with just a web browser it it is literally one click away from the user there is no need to download or install anything and i'm sure you're familiar with situations when you need to urgently do some task in some application you launch that application and dialog bo box pops up saying that well there is a new version now and okay now we will upgrade i'm sure we all been up annoyed by those types of things with your application in the cloud you control when it updates and your users don't see this upgrade process users are always on the best and the latest version of your applications and they never have to to see or to be involved in any type of maintenance or that kind of thing and in fact the flexibility of cloud would allow you to run or to make available several versions of your or several configurations of your applications uh, available to you users at the same time and they can choose between them as they as that makes sense uh, for them and the next thing here is that it works on any device now you may have an application developed with Delphi or C++ Builder working on a Windows platform which is, as Vlad said, was once the dominant, the major force uh, on the market. But those days are gone now and there are many users who come with Macs, with Chromebooks and those uh, who come with iPads and Android tablets and they may want and actually in enterprise settings they may need to run your application but they're not able to do so with the devices they've got with your application in the cloud and browser on their device you can make this all work work together all all modern platforms have browsers capable enough of supporting applications running in the cloud on rollup platform and we believe that this creates immense opportunities for vendors and developers of traditional desktop applications. Lan. Uh, well, there are, at this point there are several solutions on the market that allow you to, uh, to remotely execute your application and our solution is way more, uh, way, way better than those alternatives and there are several reasons for that. First of all, we offer readily available uh, server infrastructure. Uh, quite often, solutions that allow you to work remotely with your applications require you to, again, download those applications and uh, those solutions, install those solutions on your servers, then install your applications on top of those solutions, and after that, you can start working remotely with your applications, or you can start offering remote access to your applications to your users. Well, in our case, we already have that server infrastructure. It covers basically the entire planet. And as uh, Dima mentioned, the distance matters. If a user is quite far away from, uh, from a server, they, there would be some latency. The, the user would feel some delays while working with the application. And the experience is not going to be uh, good. In our case, we cover all major uh, locations or major markets and if you need uh, to be able to offer your application to users in other countries where we don't cover yet we can install uh, uh, servers there very easily because our, our technology works with, with basically any cloud provider we are kind of cloud of clouds we work with many different cloud providers Amazon DigitalOcean whatever you name it and we integrate servers from them into our 
server infrastructure. So the server part is already done for you. Uh, uh, and the other advantage which we have is users don't really need to install anything on their side. Quite often uh, solutions for remote access require users to install some kind of receiver application through which they're going to work with, uh, with remote apps. Or maybe they just need to install some kind of browser plugin which still takes time and effort and then you need to, to deal with that plugin on top of the browser, etc. In our case, no extra steps are required from a user side. Uh, they just need to have a browser. That's it. Another advantage is that we, we are offering almost native experience. It's not like remote desktop where they have their local desktop in their environment and on top of that they have the remote desktop and remote environment and it's not easy to switch between them, etc. In our case, the user interface of the application is as native as possible. It's almost, almost pure native application from the user experience perspective. And finally, it's a it's, it's very effective solution. We can do it fast and we can do it inexpensive. The, in most cases, we don't really require a lot of time to move your application to the cloud. And because we are using a, a Linux-based uh, server infrastructure, there, are no, there is no need to pay for Windows licenses, etc. So the solution is extremely cost efficient. Dima? Right, and speaking of moving the application to the cloud, when it comes to running the app on Rollup platform, there are uh, different there are different choices or different possibilities when it comes to a particular application. Of course, Linux applications which would run natively on our platform is, are easy and fast to, to move to the cloud. <clears throat> As I mentioned, Windows applications run on top of Wine. Wine is open source alternative implementation of Wine32 API and it covers a whole lot of different APIs provided uh, originally by the Windows operating system and many of Delphi applications are already WINE compatible and if that's the case uh, then moving the app to the cloud also is fast and easy. It's, just, it, it's a matter of installing the application in a specialized environment and then us rolling out the image for that application to all the servers which will then run it. Uh, it, it is a little bit difficult um, when the application is not readily compatible with Wine and there are different options possible. Wine is an open source project and we have experience in developing or you know fixing or making modifications to Wine to make sure that certain functions or functionalities or requirements of the applications are met with APIs provided by Wine. And as you can imagine, this type of development can take some time and it, in our experience it can take from a few weeks to a few months depending on the scope of change which is necessary to run the application. Alternatively, <clears throat> if for example your application depends on some type of component for some specific tasks which is not the component which is not readily uh, supported by wine you can make a change to your app to kind of get get rid of this dependency and maybe you know get rid of certain functions but make it compatible with wine and then it will also be easy to move the application to the cloud what we currently offer two alternative ways to deploy your applications. The first is public cloud, the second is private cloud. When we are talking, uh, if you are talking about public cloud, we are talking about using our server infrastructure. We can publish your application in, uh, on our platform and it will run on our servers. Again, there are two alternatives here. We can, uh, alternatives here, we can make it available uh, in, in, on our website, so everyone who visits uh, rollup.com will be able to work with your application. Or we can make it available only for you, so only the people who know some secret URL and know some password and login uh, and to, to, to whom you gave access, they will be able to work with your application. But still, we're talking about public cloud deployment, which means the applications will be running on our server infrastructure. 
in. Uh, another alternative is to use a private server, uh, pr private cloud deployment, which practically means running uh, our platform and uh, your applications on your servers. And in this case, we offer what we call managed service, which practically means you provide our, us with remote access to your servers. Our engineers remotely go to those servers, deploy our platform, deploy your applications on top of that platform. And after that, you are ready to operate it and uh, provide access to those applications to your users. Uh, another, another question is the branding question. Again, we are offering two, two versions here. First version is uh, using a uh, roll-up uh, branding. So in some elements, in, in some places or on the application, we actually add uh, a menu, a special roll-up menu, additionally to, uh, to what's offered by the application. And there is roll-up logo there. And of course, there is roll-up URL. And there are a few more places where users could see the name of our company. So they, they, the, your users will know that Rollup is used to virtualize those applications. The second option is to use a white label solution. Basically, we are going to remove every uh, reference to Rollup. We are going to remove our logo, our name. The URL is going to be changed. Everything is going to look as if it is you who is running the, the application. It can still use our public cloud infrastructure. It can still use our servers, or it might be deployed on, on your servers as in, in a private cloud mode. But for users, regardless of what kind of deployment is chosen for users, it's going to look as if they are working with your website, with uh, your uh, this platform hosted by you, and they, they, they're only going to see your name, your logo, uh, no reference to Rollup. Dima? Right, and another, questions, another question or set of questions that we often get is what to do when we have some sort of a back-end component for our application or some sort of a database that uh, contains the data managed by the application. And for that type of thing, we have three, three possibilities of how those applications can be moved to the cloud with Rollup. First of all, it's private cloud and in here it's important to note that the roll-up technology actually makes it possible or virtualizes the GUI portion of your client server application and when uh, we go with a private cloud type of deployment we will install roll-up technology components in, on your infrastructure in your network and the GUI portion of your client server app will be running on top of roll-up platform in your network and by the means of that it will have access to back-end components and databases or maybe other enterprise systems that the application needs to have access to in order to operate. And those um, roll-up technology components and servers will be accessible to the users from the internet while running on your network. They will be accessible to the users over the internet and they will uh, use them or access them to work with those applications. And as we mentioned many, many times already, the application would behave and appear as if they were installed on users' users' computers. The next possibility here is to host roll-up technology or lab platform in the cloud where we can create an isolated segment in the roll-up cloud which will be isolated and will be dedicated to running your application. And that isolated network segment can be connected by means of VPN or another type of secured connection to your in-house infrastructure and through that connection applications running in containers on roll-up application services, uh, servers will be able to access database and back-end components back in their mothership in your, in your network. Uh, 
And the next option, which is a natural progression of, of the first two, is to run everything in the cloud. Within that isolated segment, we can run database servers or back-end components for your applications, and they will communicate with one another, and users will um, interact with GUI portions of your client-server systems uh, through, through, through their browsers. Uh, one thing in particular which is beneficial about this type of deployment, if you have multiple customers and have to create multiple multiple deployments or multiple configurations of the same system for different customers so that each of them will have separate set of databases, separate set of back-end components. This will actually make it really, really, really easy to spawn up uh, the e copy of such a such an isolated segment of Rollup Cloud and get your new customer on board really really fast. And uh, another thing of note here is that, as we already mentioned, Rollup technology runs on top of Linux, but that doesn't mean that your backend components have to run on Linux. They can run on the platform or the operating system that they run on. Uh, it can be Windows. It can be something. In, it can be something else and the power of modern cloud allows to do that and allows to do that in a good and secure way and to do that fast and get new customers on board really really efficiently. Vlad? Okay, let's say we convinced you, you like what we offer, you want to move forward. How do we do that? The, the process yeah, is pretty... Yeah, 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 that, that's right. You need to move forward, and this is a technical question, of course, and it would be appropriate for me to, to cover okay, this. So let, let, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, but first of all, we will start with the proof of concept. We want to show you that your application can run in the cloud and can do everything you expect the application to do. You, it can do everything your users would expect the application to do. To do that, we will privately publish the application uh, using our public cloud infrastructure, but it, the application will be published in a way that only you will be able to access it. And then our team and your team will run compatibility tests to see if everything works as expected and to see if any configuration need to be fine-tuned either on your side or on our side or in the uh, settings of the applications and things like that. And once we agree that the application behaves as expected and performs optimally, we can move on to the setup phase where we will create um, a cloud configuration or private cloud uh, configuration according to the, the deployment model we devise together for, for the type of your application and then once everything is ready you can move on to the production use of your application in the cloud and attract new users and new new revenues. Now Vladi, I think you can take it. Okay, so the question is how much does it cost? Well, of course it depends. Uh, first of all, for proof of concept phase we offer uh, 20 hours of uh, customization services from our side free. In most cases, this is more than enough. In most cases, uh, the applications will run uh, on our cloud with no customization or just some minor customization will be required. Uh, so most probably it's going to be free for you. If you require, uh, if your application is not compatible with Wine or if you require some uh, complex uh, customization and deployment, fine tuning. In this case, the proof of concept is going to cost some money. We, uh, we run proof of concept on public cloud infrastructure. We don't do it on private cloud, uh, but it's enough for you to test and see if it works and play with it, etc. After that, we proceed to setup phase, uh, where we do all the fine tuning. And if we are talking about private cloud, we do actual private cloud deployment. If we need to do some um, some extra, if you if you need to put some extra efforts to deploying your server components to our cloud, we do it here. Uh, uh, again, in this case, we are charging uh, for professional services based on time. Uh, we are charging you based on time and material. But for most applications, there will be no need to to 
to do any customization for most desktop applications. <coughs> and finally, after your application is in the cloud, after after you can work, uh, after your users can can work with that, uh, we charge your subscription fee based on a number of uh, concurrent application sessions that you need to run. We don't really care how many users actually work with your application in the cloud. That could be thousands or hundreds of thousands. We only care about what is the maximum number of uh, application time slots allocated, allocated for you. How many uh, concurrent application sessions you might need per month. If you need, let's say, 50 applications, up to 50 application uh, uh, sessions per month. I, 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 when I say application sessions, I mean concurrently executed application sessions. So if you need up to 50 application slots, let me put this way, per month, then we are going to charge you $40 a month per concurrent application session. And if you need more, the price is going to go down um, as, and it will become as low as $15 per month per concurrent application session if you are talking about uh, large-scale deployments, deployments with uh, tens of thousands of application sessions allocated uh, to you. And, uh, there are, of course, there are different options. If if you want to do white label, there will be some uh, small one-time uh, fee during the setup uh, phase for white label. Um, if you want to go with monthly billing, that's perfectly fine. If you want to go with annual billing, we are going to give you some discount, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there are different options here. By the way, speaking about discounts, ah. <coughs> uh, if we are, we are going to offer a, a special discount to Embarcadero customers, and if you want to move your application to the cloud, and if you want to, to do it during the next two months, then we can offer you 25% discount to all our ser uh, services during the first year of, of, of our work together. Um, so basically, you can you can do it right after our webinar. You can go to our website, play with applications already published there, see how they work, and then submit information about your application, and we can start the process. And um, if we switch to, if you switch to using our paid services by the end of May, then you are going to get 20. 25% discount and it's pretty pretty easy to start you just go to our web, uh, website and go to www.rollapp.com slash Delphi and provide some basic information about you and your application and send this information to us and someone is going to contact you back and you start the process. So basically that's it let me summarize what we were talking about first the cloud is not the future anymore it's the present, it's already here, and for many software vendors uh, and enterprise uh, organizations, this is a way to move their uh, existing Windows applications to new platforms and reach new customers and use new use cases. Uh, it might be quite expensive to move your Windows application to the cloud, but here we are to help and our technology allows to move existing um, application, desktop applications to the cloud uh, in a very efficient, in a very efficient way. And to um, once you do it, you can deliver your application to uh, new devices. You can uh, offer new capabilities for your applications. And if you're your ISV who sells the application, then you can enjoy using new business models. And you can sell subscriptions to your applications, you can charge by hour, etc. And it's very easy to start uh, working with us. You just go to URL which you can see on the screen and uh, provide information about yourself and we can go from here and if if we start working with, uh, during the next two months then uh, you're going to get 25% discount for the first year. 
Well, basically, that's it. Jim? Yes, we do have questions. So I will uh, go through the questions here. If anybody has any other questions you want to add, go ahead and put them in the question panel and go to the webinar and we'll get them answered for you. Uh, start out here, Gene uh, saying, this is great. I've wondered for years why something like this hasn't already been done. Yeah, I agree. That this oh, pretty thank cool. you. <laughs> so here it is. Yeah. Uh, Alpha is asking, what about programs that consume private data files in order to parse and analyze them to produce resources? Will the file be stored on the cloud, or is it possible to store the file locally? Well, uh, from, from technical standpoint, the, what we have right now in our public consumer offering, users have to save their files back to, to their cloud storage like Dropbox. But there is nothing that prevents us from doing a thing where users will save a file to a certain designated location and that will trigger download of that file to back to users local computer and one thing which I didn't mention during the presentation is that the container where the application is running is um, is completely destroyed after the application session ends and every all, all the data every data file that might have been created by the application in the process of doing that is is also is also destroyed so it has to be saved uh, in, in why one way or another and speaking of saving locally this is a, a possibility to trigger the download uh, action for the file that is saved by by user and he will be able to get that on his local computer without saving it to cloud storage so uh, if, uh, we'll expand there's a few other questions to kind of expand on this what about an app that needs to uh, has a database associated with it for example if there's a, uh, a uh, uh, maybe either a, a database that's unique to the user or also the other scenario would be a database that's shared between multiple users. So I think uh, the, the scenario when the database has to be shared between multiple users were covered by those three scenarios basically we will in one way or another depending on the needs of the application there will be a server with the database put in a place which will be accessible to the applications running on our platform and that way uh, multiple users can work with, the, with that database using the application they launch on, on, on Rollapp. And if, if the database is private to the user, there, there are different options uh, depending on how it works. If the uh, database is only providing a view into the files, in the database files stored somewhere in the file system, uh, it is possible to run this database in the same container where the application is running. And that way each user will get its own instance of the database and when uh, he's done the data will be saved back to, to the files which are also saved or stored in a, in a storage specific for, for that user. So this is also a possibility. Okay, great. Uh, now, you, I think you addressed this, but the question here is if Rollup is limited to just Delphi applications or does C++ Builder also support it? Of course, uh, we, of course, we are working with different types of applications and not necessarily applications created with RAD Studio, but when it comes to RAD Studio, we work with both Delphi applications and C++ Builder applications. Okay, fantastic. What about local hardware, like a local Twain scanner? Is that is there some way that the, you can interface with that from the cloud-based rollup application? Well, actually, we entertained the idea of being able to do that, but with the current state of technology, that would hardly be possible without installing something on user's device that would allow us to interface with the with the scanner. And as you can imagine, that's not exactly the way we wanted to go so far, and therefore we do not readily support this type of with these types of applications. What about uh, things like the camera on the or uh, accelerometer or GPS or stuff like that that's pretty standard on uh, devices today? Is that the same same sort of scenario? Because a lot of those are available through the browser. 
Right, that that can be that that can be made available to the application, but the typically the desktop applications do not uh, really make use of those types of sensors, which are more common in in mobile devices and therefore most often used in, in mobile uh, mobile applications. So Gene's asking again about the perceived performance, and I'll, I'll chime in here. I, I went out and played with Rollout, and it, there's even some games on there, a few games, and I played with the games, and I would say it was pretty good. It wasn't, it was noticeable when you launched it, but after that, you, I tended to forget that I was playing through a, uh, playing a game through a web browser interface. It really felt like I was playing a local game, and I, I think uh, um, Vlad mentioned that a lot of users don't realize they're running an app through a browser window, and I and I would I would agree with that. I didn't feel like I was running running an app through a browser window. It felt like I was running a, a local native app. Um, if I was to be years, I would say there were times I could tell, but it was very uh, very uh, very minor. Uh, was was for the most part very very convenient, very very nice interface. I think it depends on location. For example, uh, uh, if you are talking uh, about uh, locations like, uh, I, I don't know, for example, uh, South Africa, um, if you try an application there, probably you might have some latency because you, you are going to be connected to the server probably somewhere in, in Europe. And we are we were a few discussions recently because it looks like we do have some pain customers in uh, South Africa, but uh, not enough really to justify uh, running servers there. But if if you are going to get more customers there, of course we are going to have servers there as well. And in this case, the performance in South Africa is is going to improve. Another story here is that the way our technology works, the, the application session is going to be launched on the server which is A, the closest to you in terms of kind of traffic distance. And second, the, 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 there should be server which, is, uh, which currently has available application slots. So for example, if you are in uh, South Africa and the closest to you server is in uh, Germany and let's say all the servers in Germany are 100% loaded, then your application is going to be launched on some other server, maybe in UK, maybe in the United States, etc. And in this case, of course, the performance is going to degrade a little bit, but the, the advantage is that you are going to, to be able to work with your, uh, uh, with your application uh, anyway. Uh, but in most cases, if you are on the market where we have presence in terms of service, uh, servers, uh, in most cases, let's say 99% of the cases, the performance is going, going to be as good as if the application runs uh, locally on your computer. And sometimes people ask questions about internet connection uh, because, of course, our technology requires you to it requires users to have internet connection. But basically, uh, anywhere where YouTube works, we work. So it's not an issue anymore. Five years, maybe 10 years ago, internet connection was an issue. Now it's virtually everywhere. We don't really consume a lot of traffic. We are extremely efficient in terms of traffic. So internet connection is, is not an issue. There's a question here about uh, printers. For example, terminal services are able to connect to local printers. Uh, how, is there a way to print locally if you create a report, for example? Right. Uh, the, there is a, a capability to print locally. We would not connect directly to a local printer, but when the user will engage the print function within the application, uh, there will be a thing called Roll App Cloud Printer, which will create a PDF file, will, which will then be transferred to the client and the print uh, printing function for the browser for that PDF file will be automatically engaged and if user clicks print again in, in that dialog it will be the document will be printed to his local file uh, to, to his local printer I mean. can the roll apps applications interact with each other for example if you have a uh, CRM and you want to have it 
uh, interact with Outlook via Olay. Is there some way to do that via Rollup? Well, um, the, the, there are two dimensions to, to this question. As because of the fact that each application runs in isolated container, applications running in separate containers cannot interact with one another, at least not by means typically available to applications running on the same computer, because it, for, to those apps it would appear that they run on two, two separate computers. But on the other side, if there are several, say, executable files in technical, technical terms running within the same container, then they, uh, then they would be able to interact using uh, inter-process communication type of thing or uh, other uh, means available uh, to, to, to them locally via the local operating system. Speaking of Outlook, uh, the problem with Outlook would be that it would be able to run uh, Microsoft Office products because of some technical limitations and uh, more importantly because of licensing issues for, for those products. But if if there are to, to, to other applications or you have an application which, which consists of several components, several separate executables which um, interoperate with one another using uh, OLE or some, some other type of inter-process communication mechanisms, those would be able to talk to one another when they are running from the same container. So basically it means we, we will need to create custom configuration when we, put, we will put two interacting applications together and we are going to treat it as kind of one more application <laughs> and you will be able to launch that application that combine that application and work with it as uh, if it's a new application published on our platform. Uh, does is there a limitation as far as 64-bit or 32-bit applications uh, working with Rollup? Oh, b both of those types of apps should should run fine on Rollup. Okay, and Ted's asking if you have a demo or a sample that that people can take a look at. Of course. I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a kind of large demo, and uh, Jim, I, I don't know how it works. We are going to send you the slide deck, which contains a link to it contains three links to Delphi applications available on our website. And uh, are, are you going to forward this slide deck to participants, or you're going to publish it? How? How, how does it work on your side? Uh, I can uh, send it out to the participants. Uh, so yeah, I can do that, send it out to the participants. Uh -huh. So those links will be available for all the participants and you can play with uh, these applications and with 230 more applications available on our website right now. You can actually also put those links in the chat window if you want to and people can access them right now. Oh, perfect. Let me do it. And and one more thing, if you, if you reach out to us, we can even arrange a demo of your application on Rollab. So, so get in touch. Oh, great. Uh, I, yeah, and I went out and used some of your public apps that are up there, and like I said, they, they worked. Uh, I was actually quite surprised how well they worked. <laughs> um, what about using um, ODBC or BDE or some sort of database connectivity from within Rollapp? Is that, that would be something that would be connected to within the app itself, right? Right, that, that would have to come from, from the application itself and right now the apps, I, I don't recall if we have any applications which actually make use of the databases, but as, as in the scenario with the two applications uh, interacting via OLE or something like that, the database server would also either have to run in the same application container and um, they will be interact with one another and do the thing or we will need to uh, arrange a special setup and have the server with the database, database server um, up and running uh, in, in, with a, with a network and within network configuration that would allow a GUI portion of the app to to access that 
that server. But if if we are talking about scenario when the application uses BDE to work with files, with database files in the file system, uh, those type of scenarios should work without additional um, effort, either on your side or on our side. Okay. Um, so Stephen Ball's online with the air as well here, and he just commented that he's had a system before in the past with uh, Twain scanners where he installed something locally and uh, uh, a service locally that then the remote app connected to. And so I, I would guess probably in like a private uh, cloud scenario that so if that was required, you're probably something like that you could do with roll app. Is would you? I would I would think so, but that again would would depend on the specifics. Yeah. of the application and the requirements it has. So Ted says he just clicked that link you put in there and tried out TurboCache and is very professed, very impressed with the performance. Woohoo. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. For me as well. Um, Roman, I was saying that his application loads JPEGs and PDF files in a table on a database. Does that was something that he could do with Rollapp as well? I would think so. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Okay. Uh, and then Michael says, what about uh, Ole containers used to start files? Has the server uh, app uh, has the server app to be installed in an isolated app container? Okay, so if they're, I guess this is again the, the interaction between apps via Ole, would they have to be installed in the same container or could they be installed? Right. Right. They would uh, have to be installed on the same same container. All the components which comprise the dependencies of the application or things the application calls would uh, need to be placed in the same container as the application. So there's a question here about whether we're going to have a replay for later. Yes, there will be a replay so that if you someone wasn't able to watch this, you can certainly share them with them, with them later. Uh, the question here, though, uh, Vlad, if this works with uh, apps developed with the .NET framework, typically speaking? It depends. Uh, most uh, .NET uh, desktop applications uh, will work, but we will need to test your specific application to see whether it works. And if not, what can we do to, to change it? Uh, as Tima described, um, in some cases, uh, we might fix Wine for you if this particular application is not comp compatible with Wine uh, or Wine is not compatible with this particular application. In some other cases, it's maybe, it, it may be more efficient to simply make some small changes to the application and remove uh, some, some calls to, uh, to API that is not supported by one. But as I said, in, in most cases we are, we are going to be able to, to work with your application with uh, kind of out of the box, uh, out of the box uh, with no changes. But we need to test your application. So Donald's asking what would be the difference between a roll app and uh, Cyberly's Synfinity Virtual UI, if you're familiar with that uh, platform. I believe one of the differences off the uh, bat is that um, Thinfinity does require modification to your app. It doesn't work with apps out of the box. It requires them to be modified and rebuilt for their platform. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with differences beyond that. I'm, uh, I'm not really sure uh, about all the changes. The way, uh, the way I understand, I'm just briefly familiar with uh, their technology. There is... Uh, there is a need to um, modify uh, your existing application and uh, also um, I'm not really sure if they offer the uh, hosting infrastructure for you to work with, uh, to, to host those applications. But unfortunately I can't say that I'm an expert in, in their technology. I mean I heard about them. I. Uh, someone showed me how they work, but it was some time ago. I, I'm not sure where they are right now. If it is interesting, you can contact us later and we'll, someone from our team will reach you and send you more details about this, okay. about how we are, how exactly we are different from them. 
So, Donald, if you need more information, you can follow up with the info at rollapp.com email address you see up on the screen right now. Very cool. Well, thank you, Vlad, for this presentation for putting this together. I uh, think it's a. I, I think rollout's pretty neat. I had a chance to play with it and found that it was a uh, uh, very responsive, very uh, native-like behavior while using it. It was uh, a very pleasant experience. So, I think certainly a lot of potential here for uh, moving apps to the cloud. I, I actually find I'm thinking about using it a lot. <laughs> it seems to be a good, 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 good solution. So. And thank, thank you for, for and thank you for inviting us to speak at your webinar. And of course, thank you to everyone who, uh, who has attended uh, this event. Absolutely. Yes. Thanks everyone for being here. All right. Well, we will talk to you all later. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.